Rub up your engines! Well, here's a great one I can't help but laugh at. Turns out that GM and Honda are ditching their plans to make cheap electric vehicles together. <laughs> what a surprise, people. What a surprise. They said that they were going to debut a line of sub-30,000 EVs, electric vehicles, in 2027. But now that plan is kaput. Who didn't expect that, you know? I mean, originally Honda and GM said, we're going to make millions of these vehicles by 2027. But now, after extensive studies and analysis, we have come to a mutual decision to discontinue the program. Each company, though, remains committed to affordability in the EV market. Horse manure, horse manure coming out of their mouths again, right? Because they're finding out people don't want to buy the stupid things, right? <laughs> Even in China, they're having a hard time selling them, right? And the Chinese government's been putting billions and billions to prop up their electric vehicle company. They've been losing money there for a long time. That company, NEO, that makes electric cars in China, has lost $35,000 dollars per car that they've sold, right? Because the Chinese government's propping them up. But in our capitalist society, GM and Honda are saying, uh, nah, this isn't going to work out. Bye. We said that we were going to do that in 2027, but we have no interest in doing it anymore. <laughs> Maybe they'll all wise up and cut all the production of these stupid electric cars that nobody but a bunch of fools who've been suckered into. Electric cars are going to save the planet. They're not going to save anything. They're going to cost a fortune. They pollute just as much, if not more. It's just the whole plan is totally absurd. It's a giant rat's nest of problems. <laughs> and now GM and Honda are saying, well, I guess our idea of building cars for this rat's nest and cheaper cars, now nah, forget that. We're not going to do that anymore. Chairman of Toyota has now come out and said, people are finally seeing the reality about electric vehicles. Between the price war with China and the lessening demand for them, all these companies are starting to think, maybe we shouldn't make so many of them. People don't want to buy them. They're not even buying them in China. I'll give you a perfect analogy. There's an electric car company in China called Neo, and they just converted their 30 millionth battery swap in China. Neo's thing is, instead of sitting there for an hour waiting, they have robotic stations, and they change the battery of your car in three or four minutes. So you don't have to buy the battery, you're just paying a monthly fee, so you don't have an upfront cost of the battery, which is a lot, and then you just swap them out. And they just did their 30 millionth one, right? But it turns out that NEO is losing $35,000 per car that they're selling. The Chinese government has propped up electric cars a whole bunch in China. Ultimately, even though it is supposedly a communist country, which seems weird to me, because they've got a stock market, they've got ownership of property, all those things are anti-communist, but be that as it may, still in China, you want an electric car, you got to buy it, right? Guess what? The Chinese aren't that interested in buying them anymore either, and they're finding the rest of the world going along the same line. So, looks like old Toyota was correct when he said, we're not jumping into this electric thing too soon. Hybrid cars and plug-in hybrids make a lot more sense than pure electric cars, right? Take battery swapping, for example. Neo swapped 30 million batteries in China already, right? 30 million they've swapped but they lose money at it, right? What if battery swapping becomes what they all do? They'd have to standardize the batteries, right? Which Neo, they all have the same batteries, so they can swap them, right? Not here. Tesla's got a different battery than Ford, than Nissan. They're all different. You couldn't do it, right? Wait for the future. And I'm talking about maybe 10, 20 years or more down the line. Don't buy one now. Well, Mary Barr says they're putting the cheaper LFP battery in their Chevy Bolts, right? They, they're going to make them cheaper, they said, right? Yeah, they're making them cheaper, all right. LFP battery packs stand for lithium iron phosphate. You want to know something about them? They're not as energy dense as lithium ion. They don't hold as much power. So, of course, that would mean they have less range. Well, in terms of that, here's what Mary says, and then we'll analyze the horse manure coming out of her mouth. We are leveraging the best attributes of today's Bolt, as well as Altium, our latest software. We will deliver an even better driving and charging and ownership experience with the vehicle, as we know they love. Horse manure, right? Here's the truth. She didn't talk about battery range because it'll have less battery range. They're less energy dense. They're cheaper to make, but they're going backwards. The whole thing was, theoretically, when they started 
started making electric cars, well, we'll make them so they have a longer range and better batteries. In this case, they're using cheaper batteries. Yes, they are cheaper to make people, but they have less range. They won't go as far. They're going to step backwards in electric cars. They want people to buy these cars, and instead of the technology moving forward and saying, oh, now you can go four or 500 miles, you will be able to go less mileage. And of course, she couldn't say, and they deliver better mileage because it would be an outright lie. People would figure that out. So she didn't talk about that. She just said, as I quoted, we will deliver a better driving, charging, and ownership experience. What a lot of horse manure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to these idiots, right? They're just trying to sell you crap. If you know anything about electricity, lithium iron phosphate batteries, they're cheaper to make. They do charge up faster, yada, yada, yada. They're less energy dense. They don't have as much energy. It's just that it's cheaper to make. And if you know anything about the history of GM, they just want to make things cheaper. That's all they care about. I remember decades ago, GM did a study when people all agreed that GM cars were about 20% better built than Ford cars, right? And so they did a study and GM said, well, you know what? We're spending 20% more building our cars than Ford is. So what did GM do? They immediately started making them cheaper so they didn't spend as much building the cars as Ford. And guess what? Their quality went downhill. We got some geniuses at work in GM and they don't seem to have changed anything in the past two decades other than perhaps they're getting even worse. Neil Seven AWD says, is this the only reliable high performance car? 2020 Lexus RCF, not the RCF Sport, but a real RCF with the V8 and speed activated rear wing. I'm in the military and I'm thinking about getting, what do you think? It's got 472 horsepower V8 motors. From my experience, it'd be a very reliable car. Problem with Lexus and their high performance cars, they don't perform against the real high performance cars. And the guys that are the snobs, Ferrari and Lamborghini and the, the real loonies that are paying three or four million for a Koenigsegg, super expensive car, high performance car, right? The Lexus is last, but they're not in that elite grade of how they actually perform, you know? For all, you're gonna drive it on the street, have fun. They're great cars to drive around, right? Don't take it to the racetrack because those guys will blow you away. They're not made for racetracks. They're made for on the street fun and they go super fast and they're fun to drive out driven them. You know, they are a lot of fun. But the real snobs say, well, that's not, they're not even in our league. You can't call that a high performance car, right? Well, <laughs> That said, if you want something that goes fast and have fun, go ahead and get it. They're reliable and everything, you know. So, yeah, it'd be a fun, good car for driving around. If you want to spend that kind of money, you can find a good one. Go ahead and buy it. It'll probably hold its value because the V8s will keep the value. They'll probably go up in value as time goes on. Check it out. I can't help but laugh. This is a Tesla X owner in China, and he has put buttons in his car. He said, I'm sick of this minimalist crap where if you've ever been in a Tesla, there's no dials or anything, right? There's nothing to turn your wiper on. You got to go to a screen, push on the touch screen, all this crap, right? It's ridiculous, but oh, it's minimalist. Oh, it's not a car. It's a work of art. It's a minimalist work of art, like the minimalist school of art, right? I mean, this is how nuts these idiots have gotten, right? Now, this is one reason I'm not an electric car fan, but when I road test at Volvo electric car, I actually love the car. If I hadn't been an electric car, I'd think about getting one, but I'm getting an electric car, so forget that. If I was, I liked it because it was like a regular car. It had a gear shift knob on it, right? Park new neutral drive, it had gear shift knob, it had a knob for cruise control, it had a knob to turn the wipers on, it had a dash that looked like a regular car dash, not some space age crazy thing that's over in the side, right? That's why, I mean, hey, to me, Volvo's got more sense. Build a car that looks like a regular car, it's an electric car, so people will seamlessly integrate it, and they're not going into this minimalist thing like a Tesla that you don't know what the heck anything's doing. Well, this guy in China, he actually retrofitted and put a module in it where he can push buttons turn our wipers and stuff. I think it's hilarious. And then, of course, they had comments from the Tesla fanboys, and one of them said, well, you're ruining the minimalist idea of the Tesla. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of people who buy Teslas, right? All right, the Tesla Cybertruck, check it out. There they are, showing up, putting their brake lights on. But their brake lights don't make any sense. This is what happens, you have a lunatic, like Elon Musk involved in building something. Here is the plain stupidity, at least the ones they have driving down the road that they're road testing them now, because you can't buy them yet. He says he's gonna sell them by November. Well, I don't see them being sold, but whatever, right? Here's the problem with the stupid design of it. When the Tesla Cybertruck is driving down the road, it's an electric truck, right? The light bars on the back are relatively bright. They're pretty bright, right? Now, when you step on the brakes, brake lights do come on. When you step on the brake lights, it's dimmer. 
than when you don't have the brake lights. So if it's driving down the road, you see it in front of you, and it's real bright, you might think he's got his brakes on. But when he hits his brakes, actually, it becomes less bright because the brake lights aren't as bright as the running lights. It turns the running light parts off. So most cars, you drive around, you're following them. They look normal. They hit the brakes. They're real bright. And you know, oh, stop. No, oh, bright lights, right? Tesla's are the opposite. They're bright to start with. And then when they step on the brake, they're not as bright, which is plain stupidity. I know this idiot wants to redesign everything, but hey, redesigning something wrong is not the right way to go. We all know from our experience, when the bright lights come on in front of you, look at the brake lights, right? But to test the Cybertruck, they're bright to begin with, and then when they hit the brakes, they're less intensity. There's less light coming at you. Total stupidity, but what do you expect? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.